Okay, so in the last video, I got a lot of people who are really fascinated by some of the glass blind. So this is just going to be a quick summary of uh, some of the basics and cooler elements of glass blowing. So what I've got here is some borosilicate glass, and that actually is very heat resistant. This is just a little butane torch. This just burns in air. Yeah. So this stuff is really quite heat resistant, and the butane torch uh, really doesn't have that much juice in it. Yeah. So, in order to get things to burn better, you need uh, one of these guys. So this is a oxygen propane torch, and at the moment, the wheezing you can hear in the background is a oxygen generator. So there's just oxygen coming out of this at the moment. Okay. So, if I actually move the butane torch such that it's taking in some oxygen, it gets a lot hotter. In fact, it'll, it'll, it won't do this thing any good because it's sort of stuff and melt if I do this too much. But anyway, so that's um, one of the nice things about oxygen is it allows the things to burn much hotter. So what I'm going to do first, for starters, is I'm just going to kill the oxygen and turn the gas on. There we go. All right. So, we've got a sooty flame there. Um, I'm going to show you some glass blowing glasses. These are glass blowing glasses, these things here. Um, and if I put them over the lens, you will see they don't really seem to make that much difference. And they don't, it's true. They let through an awful lot of light. But they do do one interesting thing. So I've got two sets of, of glasses here. There's another pair. Oh. And that's uh, if I start putting some some oxygen into this flame. I'm just going to get a little bit of oxygen in there for starters. I'm just going to move that in there. So there's not much. To, there is a bit of clean up on, on the sodium starting to come off there. But if I actually crank this up a bit, you start to get this really bright orange glow off that. I melted the glass a bit. So, now, what you'll find is when I put the glass specs on, that it almost completely cuts out the sodium glare. You can actually see what you're doing on the glass. Now, the reason it can do this is because this is sodium uh, borosilicate glass. And that's got sodium in it. So what's happening here is the sodium ions are evaporating off the glass and then they're ionizing in here. So if you actually do a spectra of this, what you'll find is there's actually only one really sharp, well, there's actually two really sharp lines in here and that's for the sodium uh, emission. And if you cut those out like that, all you see is the very dull red heat of the glass. So what I'm going to do now is show you exactly what that looks like uh, with the spectrometer and just how much of the spectrum these things cut out. Okay, so there I have my spectrometer. Just wired up to this computer. So what you see on the screen. So if I point the, it's, this is the spectrometer probe, so the light that comes in here it shows the spectrum on the, on the screen, so I'll point it at the screen, that's what the spectra of the screen looks like. So if I point it at the red area of the screen, for instance, you can see it looks mostly red. If I point it at the purple area of the screen, it looks mostly purple. If I point it out of the window, you get what looks more like a solar spectrum. Right. Figure that out. Right. Excellent. So there we go. It's saturating out a bit, but it doesn't matter. Right, so what we've got here is that this here is the spectral probe. Just about see that there. It's the spectral probe. Um, right in front of pointing directly at the flame there. And this is the spectra of that flame. So it's basically a black body spectra, but it's peaked out in the red, uh, which obviously it's a reddish flame. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to mix some oxygen in there, so that's about right. Okay, so we've got a nice blue flame there now. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my glass into that nice and gentle. So it's just about clipping the, clipping the flame. It's about there somewhere. Uh, oops. So we have a nice orange colour coming off the flame, and instantly you can see it here. This, uh, this orange uh, line, which is from the sodium. Sodium is actually two lines really close together, but for the purpose of this, we'll just call it the the sodium line. And this can actually be a real problem for glass blowing, not just in that it stops you from seeing what the hell's going on, but you do this with a big piece of glass, you can actually damage your eyes that there's so much light coming off on on this uh, on this yellow excitation line, and that's why these are you know not only necessary for safety they're necessary for you to see what the hell you're doing so if i actually get my my glasses here and I just put them into the flame like that you see it absolutely kills the the orange color and you can see what you're doing and this this line here just vanishes almost completely when you put the glass blowing specs in there so you've got this very selective absorbance in the yellow. And I'll show you that really quite nicely. So if I just sort of kill the oxygen for a second. That's good, that's perfect. Right, so now we have our nice orange flame that we had previously. And I'm going to put my specs in there again. And what you'll find is now you can see this really strong absorbance at 600 nanometers. And the, the sodium line is 580, or the sodium doublet. So it's got this really selective absorbance in, in the yellow. So not only are these things really good, well, <laughs> they're necessary for glass blowing, they're also quite cool for astronomy, or they used to be. And that's because a lot of the streetlights are sodium streetlights. And I'll show you what that looks like now. Okay, so what you've got here is that guy there is a sodium streetlight. That there is a diffraction grating. So what that's going to do is it's going to split up the light from the sodium streetlight, much like a prism would. So if we actually move this over to the side, we'll actually see the spectrum. There we go. That's the spectrum here of the sodium streetlight. And you can see it's got these lines in it. because These are the emission lines from the individual elements. And the one that's really bright is that yellow one. The yellow one is, is the sodium line at 580 nanometers. Now that's also the same color light we got off our glass blank. So our glass blank specs here, let's see what they do. If we actually move those up in front. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move that filter across and you see it completely takes out the orange there just vanishes completely from the spectrum. And that's the majority of light that comes from these things. So if I just do this, you'll see that it actually cuts out a lot of the light. Then cut it all out, but um, it does take the majority of the light from the sodium street lights out. Now the reason this used to be really important for astronomers is because the street lights used to be low pressure sodium street lights. And when there was low pressure sodium street lights, you only only got the orange line here yeah so with that these these filters these sodium filters were incredibly effective right then they went over to high pressure sodium street lights and the difference between low pressure and high pressure sodium street lights is with high pressure this orange line becomes much broader it also gets that dark line in the middle that you can see there and that means that you know these filters become less effective um, it's screening out all of this light pollution and now they've actually gone over in England to using LED lights which it's great that they would give nice white light but it's an absolute disaster for astronomy and light pollution and I'll show you why okay so this is now going to be our LED light that guy there that's an LED light I've turned the lights down so you can actually see the spectrum better that's our diffraction grating so there's our spectrum from our LED light, which you see is a wonderful continuous spectrum, which gives you a nice white light until you try and filter it out using our, our glass filter. 
and you see it cuts out the orange very well, but virtually all of the light that comes out of these things is left intact. So basically, once you go over to LEDs for lighting things at night, you can't sensibly combat it in light pollution because there's no way that you can actually... You know, all the time you were using sodium streetlights, there was just one little orange piece of light in there and you could get rid of it all just by one little filter that just cuts out that little bit of the spectrum. But when you get a white light like this, white LED lights, there's just nothing you can do about it. And if you're interested in the kit I used in this video, I got the spectrometer secondhand off eBay, where they're actually quite common for about 700 bucks. Now it is a really cool piece of kit, but 700 bucks is kind of steep for something that's just kind of cool. The diffraction grating, on the other hand, come in packs of 10 off eBay or Amazon for about 20 bucks. They're about two bucks each. And they're super cool in that you can see the spectra, lines and all, with your naked eye. Indeed, I now always carry these things around in my wallet because all of a sudden you can just blow someone's mind with this street light. So even though I'm not gonna add this video to the Patreon supported feed because not a great deal of effort went into making this video. However, if you like the content on this channel and want to support it directly, Patreon is the place to do it.